What is up guys, this is Tito back with another video on the Redmi K20 Pro and today in this video I'm gonna be showing you the latest Evolution X ROM based on Android 12.1 and that's just interesting right? And we have the 14th March 2022 build right here. This build of course includes the G apps and there is a lot of changes over here on this ROM. If you look at the change logs, it just doesn't end and you can read them out from right here. There are huge amount of changes for this ROM. The first thing you might be seeing there is edit call recording support. I don't have a SIM card in the device yet, but you can of course record the calls here. And we have a lot of other changes. You might see it from right here. It says update evolver summary to reflect 12.1. And it also has the app lock. That's why it's suggesting me to actually unlock the telegram app. And from right here, if I tap the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, I'm in the app. If I didn't put the password or fingerprints, it would just leave me back to the home screen. And here, let me tell you, the flashing method is still similar and you can flash with the same method as you used to do. And you can definitely watch the flashing guide from the description or the cards if you want to flash this particular ROM. But let me tell you, if you are on the previous Evolution X ROM based on Android 12, you need to clean flash this Android 12.1 based Evolution X. So make sure if you are moving from the previous build, you should not dirty flash it over the previous build. If you do, you might be facing a lot of force closes and stuff in the UI. So I'll definitely recommend you guys not to dirty flash the latest build of the Evolution X ROM on top of the older Evolution X ROM based on Android 12 build. I hope you got that. So right now I am moving to the about section. So here in the about section, this is how it looks like we have the Evolution X logo up top. Then we have the Android version as Android 12 where it shows because even in Pixel, I think it doesn't show as Android 12.1, but that's how it is as of right now. And the Evolution X version shows as Snow 6.2 Rafael and there is the official mentioned over here. And we have the security patch as latest of March 5th, 2022. So that's just amazing. And the stock kernel here is the Soviet star kernel. Build date here mentioned again, 14th March, 2022. And we have the build maintainer's name right here, Johua of course. And the build number is present. SLX status shows as enforcing. Talking about the system panel, it is very similar. We do have a system updated and you can check for updates from here, of course. Let me go back and in the gestures, we have the quickly open camera and stuff and all those gestures. But let me tell you the quick tap or the back tap kind of feature, which was there earlier, that has been removed from here. And in the system navigation gestures in the settings, of course, swipe to invoke assistant and stuff is working perfectly fine. And we have the left edge, right edge kind of customization. If you scroll down, we have the amount of screen height to be used for the touch or back gesture. And we have the full screen gestures right here. And the pill length you can change but thickness you cannot change over here and if you enable the full screen gestures again the pill bar will be hidden so if you want that you can definitely enable the full screen gestures let me go back we have the three button navigation but the two button navigation has been removed we have the one-handed mode so that is working perfectly fine the press and hold power button for assistant swipe to take screenshot is also there let me actually show you that and here if i am in the play store where there is a lot of scrolling area if i take a screenshot there is the share edit delete and the capture more option if i click on capture more as you can see you can actually expand the screenshot just like this and you can go into edit and then you can have something marked up just like this so yeah this is working great and you can share them out or just delete them from right here or you can just save it on your internal storage now frankly on this latest build i would say this thing i do not like that even in the light theme the quick setting panel stays dark but on the previous build on of this one it was white for some reason on the latest build this background is dark even in the light theme but yeah this might be changed in the future updates this one thing that has changed in the settings panel if you look at the bottom of the evolver it says the evolution of your device now on 12.1 so that simply mentions that this is based on android 12.1 and they are pretty proud about it but here let me show you the changes and I have the Redmi Note 7 Pro right here because this device is running on the Spark OS based on Android 12. The animations are from the Android 12, of course. And here I'll show you the differences. So first thing that you might be noticing is the power menu kind of animation. And in the quick setting panel, this is how it looks like. And yes, this has a lot of customization. So it looks a bit different, but in stock, it doesn't look like this. But yeah, I'm just showing you for the comparison sake. And here we have the power menu. So if you tap on that, you might be seeing the animation differences. On the Android 12.1, the power menu actually appears from the power button itself, you might be noticing. But here on the Android 12, it actually appears from the sides just like this. It is immersive, but yeah, it looks a little weird. But on the Android 12.1, it's much more looking good or better if you're noticing the animations. So yeah, the animation of the power menu appearance 
I just like it so much in Android 12.1 and that's just great. Now a few more things are different like the Android 12 clock widget. If you go into it, the animation is pretty similar. But once you go home, just notice how it looks. And here, if you're noticing, it bounces a bit as you're noticing when I'm going home. Just look at this. It's not bad, but yeah, it just bounces around a lot. But here on the latest Android 12.1, that's not how it is. It actually goes in a really gentle way, in my opinion, if you're noticing. But here, the app opening or going back animation is different. Let me show you with the Play Store app. It might be looking a little better. With the Play Store app, let me go back. And just notice on the older Android 12, it actually goes back just like this. It doesn't look good. It just like goes away somewhere. So yeah, this is how it looks on the older Android 12. But on the newer one, this is how it looks. It just goes back to the icon where I opened it from. If you're noticing, the difference is pretty visible. Let me open Chrome. So if I'm going back from Chrome, just notice how much difference there is with the animations. Now let me show you even more differences over here. And that is with the split screen. On the older Android 12, if you open an app and then put that to split screen, let me show you. So if I open Play Store and then go to split screen, and open Twitter, this is how it looks like. It doesn't look bad, but it looks very basic kind of design, right? But here on the latest Android 12, let me actually open this, open Play Store. And if I open it on the split top mode, the split screen mode right now says split top. So if I click on that, and if I open Play Store and Twitter together, this is how it looks like. You might be seeing there is a little bit of difference. There is rounded corners between them, but here, the corners or the border is very sharp. But here, if you double tap on the bottom, it doesn't do anything. But if you want to switch these apps on the latest 12.1, you can just double tap over here. You might be noticing there is a lot of difference. It definitely looks better on the latest Android 12.1, as you are noticing. So it just switches around between the apps just like this very easy to do now one more thing that is better on the latest android 12 if you're if i'm going home and on this older one if i'm going home you might be seeing there is this particular app which you have already opened on the top that just looks weird right so if i have to open another app then only i will see in the split screen but here let me actually show you in the latest one if i'm going into the recent apps this is how it looks like and it does look actually better in my frank opinion as you can see these have like two apps grouped right here and you can open multiple apps just like this if i open youtube and let's assume i'm opening facebook if i open these apps in split top mode then youtube if i click on that as you can see this is how it looks like so yeah this is better and this is actually keeping all the apps together just like as you left it let me show you i can open this twitter and youtube just like this and i can just go into this facebook and youtube app I mean Twitter and Play Store and then Facebook and YouTube app just like this. And it even keeps the segment that you have already created. Like the Facebook is smaller right now and the YouTube is bigger on this. And if I open the other one, both apps are 50-50%. So this is great changes I would say for Android 12.1. And they have been already implemented in a custom ROM like Evolution X on the Redmi K20 Pro and that's just beautiful. Now, talking about the customization, of course, in the Evolver, there is the customizations part. They might be a little low when compared to the older Android 12 based Evolution X ROM. But here we do have a lot of customizations and we have the headset, Bluetooth, etc. icons. Let me go back and the traffic indicators are there and the battery icons are there. But there is no big dot circle or those kind of things have been removed. And we have the next to the icon battery percentage if you want that and we have the vaulty icon and stuff and the combined signal icon toggle is there show notification option is there privacy indicator is also there and we have the heads up notification we can enable that and customize that and we have the vibrate on connect call waiting and disconnect in the quick setting we have the secure quick toggles and it is a lot more cleaned up i would say the customization panel i mean and we have the power menu we have the advanced reboot and stuff of course you can directly reboot to the recovery if you want to then we have the gestures and stuff the long press power button toggle torch then the double tap to sleep on the lock screen all those things are there the buttons are there and we have the invert layout of the three buttons 
and we have the animations like the screen of animation and the charging animation both are there i'll show you the charging animation later on in the misc settings we still have the unlimited google photos in the unlock higher fps in games unlock higher quality streams and the usb configuration is also there so you can have it on file transport for convenience also there is a game space and you can enable the gaming mode if you want to so that's all the customization which are right now present in the latest build of evolution x i know it is a lot lesser than it was but this is android 12.1 you're getting over here so the customization will be added in the future but as of right now they are pretty limited when compared to the previous evolution x versions and here we have the battery settings this is looking a little bit different because on the bottom right now we have the battery temperature the idle manager is there the battery manager is there and the battery saver is of course there you can see the full battery usage from right here Aku battery app and with that the battery life have been good enough i have been getting about six hours of screen on time if you are noticing from right here so six hours of screen on time is not too great but yeah it is decent i would say for this device and this is a very early android 12.1 build so the battery life as far as the development goes the battery life should be improved in the future but as of right now again this is a very early build so the battery life will not be too great and here in the health section we have 71 percent health left if you're noticing and also fast charging is working fine and the device doesn't get too much hot while fast charging i have seen so it is pretty decently fast charging no issues even with a 33 watt fast charger so again the screen on time should be decent about six hours of screen on time you will get with moderate usage now it's time to show you guys the charging animation so this is how it looks like on the older android 12 and this is how it looks on the newer android 12.1 Jumping back to the settings, we have the sound settings right here and if you scroll down more, we have the phone ringtone live caption etc, the vibrate for calls, then we have the alarm sound etc and the charging sound and stuff you can enable or disable, part app volume control is there, touch or haptic feedback is there, the touch vibration I mean and we have the me sound enhancer, from here you can have the presets and I have been using it with the youth edition, the sound quality via the headphone jack and bluetooth as well was amazing, I haven't had any issues with the sound quality here. The preset options are also there, we have the soft bass, bass reduction, triple reduction, soft treble, etc options, even the bass booster is there, we have the enable hi-fi option too over here. Then we have the clear speaker mode, so if your speakers are dusty or they sound muffled, this option might be helpful for you. And the wallpapers and styles looks like this and of course the default Evolution X wallpapers looks just beautiful if you're noticing and once you scroll up just like this it looks like this and it does this kind of animation if I'm doing it slow and it definitely looks beautiful and if you're noticing even on the quick setting panel it looks beautiful. Of course the monet theme engine is working great, we have the colors and stuff changing option, even the basic colors are there, the dark theme you can enable from right here, the themed icons are there, even the app grid you can customize up to 5x5. Five in the security settings, this is how it looks like. We have the face unlock and fingerprint. We also have the app lock. Let me actually show you the app lock is working great. If I'm tapping the fingerprint scanner, as you can see, it brings me back to the app. I didn't talk about the home screen and stuff, but here we still have the pixel launcher and swiping up gets to the app drawer. You can search for any particular apps. Swiping down gets to the quick sending panel. But right now, let me show you the fingerprint scanner speed and the face unlock speed. So here, as you are noticing, this is how the always on display looks like. It doesn't have the weather in the lock screen so that's how it is as of right now but yes they might be added in the future i'm not really sure but yeah the bigger like clock we still have and that looks beautiful if i'm tapping the fingerprint scanner just notice it unlocks pretty fast let me try one more time and also the fingerprint scanner has a little bit of animation but this icon you cannot change as of right now and even the animations you cannot change but yeah this is the animation that it does while unlocking if you're noticing up close So it definitely does look beautiful while unlocking and if you are willing to see the face unlock speed for that i have set it to swipe up then unlock let me just swipe up and right now as you can see this is how the face unlock works let me try one more time so yep the face unlock speed is pretty fine with a motorized camera it is definitely slower than unlocking with the fingerprint scanner talking about a few normal things like the safety net and stuff they are working perfectly fine so it passes right out of the box you can use banking apps over here without any issues 
Also, the DRM info shows as L1, so you can stream Netflix or Amazon Prime videos in 1080p right out of the box. And talking about the performance, the performance of this ROM is great as of right now and even in future it will be improving. And right now this is the Android 2 score and the Geekbench score which I have got with a CPU stress test you can see from the screen. Also, I missed one thing about the camera and the stock camera here is very basic. I shouldn't even talk about it. But yeah, this is the older kind of Google camera that is present by default and I haven't even used that. But let me tell you, this is the camera I have installed. This is a Gcam Unix version. And with that, if I switch the front camera, let me actually show you the front camera and stuff. Everything is working great and you can go into the night side. That should be working great too, even for the back camera, if you're noticing. The night side photos should be working great and we also have the 0.66 or the ultra wide angle lens then we have the like telephoto kind of lens and even in video let me show you you can shoot 30 to 60 fps over here so yeah the camera is actually working great with a google camera if you want to install it separately but anx camera as of right now i haven't tried i don't know if that will work but it's up to you you can try that but i will not recommend that because it might be buggy and flashing magic and stuff might be weird in Android 12.1. So yeah, I won't recommend that. But yeah, you can try it if you want to. I haven't showed you guys the quick setting panel. This is how it looks like. And I have added a lot of toggles. But you can add them one by one by just going into the edit icon. Then you can just add them by just tapping on these icons. But let me show you which ones I have added. I have added the Wi-Fi toggle and the mobile data of course is there. But it is disabled. It kind of shows because I don't have a SIM card in the device. The Bluetooth toggle is there, the flashlight is there, the dark theme, auto rotate, night light and the hotspot. Then we have the always on display toggling option for charge and stuff you can enable. And we have the reboot toggle too, you can directly reboot to the recovery from right here. The DC dimming also we have the high brightness mode, the daylight kind of brightness. And we have the volume panel, the FPS info also appears. Once you enable that, if you are noticing, the FPS info does show up on the top left. The evolver settings is there, if you tap on it, it just goes directly into the customization section. Now we have the home controls or the Google home kind of controls in the airplane mode, the nearby share and the screen recording is also there. So you can record the device audio and the microphone audio with the same time. And here this is how the animation appears and it looks definitely beautiful. And we have the sound toggle too, the heads up, the battery saver and the do not disturb. That's it. So that's been it guys about the latest Evolution X ROM. I'm really sorry for the background noise guys. Thanks so much for watching this video guys. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Share this video with your friends if you like the Android 12 on the latest Evolution X. For the Redmi K20 Pro, please subscribe to the channel if you have not yet. This is Tito from KD Index signing off for today. I'll be catching you guys in the next one. Bye now.